Dance to Pete here, the horse talk show. I'm with Tommy Turner, the fence Turner, and we're going to do a walk and stop. So, walk and stop, we're going to educate you on how your older fence needs to be replaced or what you can do that Tommy, being with Equifence, is going to be able to help us with. So, Tommy, tell us a little bit about Equifence and what you guys do. Well, we specialize in horse fencing. That's that's our that's our main main thing we do. Um, custom horse farms, new install repair. Um, so you do anything that has a post and a board. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Okay, yeah. for residential as well as farms? we do residential. Sure, um, I have a residential crew. Okay, that that they specialize in that. Um, um, our our main crews do horse farms. That's that's what okay. that's that's our that's our main. Okay, so we're gonna walk around with Tommy, yeah, and he's gonna point out anything he sees, and as soon as he sees it, we're gonna stop and we're gonna talk about it. So yeah. go ahead, let's take a walk and tell me what you see, or do you already see something? Well, let's just start here. All I mean, right, we're here. So this is typically an afterthought. This is this is some is the fence was already here. Somebody said, oh, we have dogs or we need to keep something out or in. So let's just put wire over top. Is it wrong? Yeah. Is it the cheapest way? Sure. You don't have to take the boards off. Maintenance wise, it's a pain in the butt. If you have an old board or bad board, to change the board, you're gonna have to take the wire off, fix the board, put the wire back on. In a, in a pinch, it works. Yes, sir. Functionally, it works. Maintenance wise, does it look good? No, it's not great for maintenance. It's not great for looks, but it will work in a pinch. Right. Not recommended, zero stars. Actually, you say that I have a broken board over on the other side of the fence, the same way done, and now I can't fix it because I'd have to tell it, take all the wire there off. There you go. I mean, and you can see, you know, you come over here, this board's loose, and I thought I'd seen one that was rotted through. Maybe not. Maybe I'll okay, so, over here. So let's, let's talk about if this didn't have the wire, what would you do? with a board that's doing that would you replace it yeah or... it needs to be changed out it's twisted pretty good um and it's it's definitely got some age on it i would just you know just take this off and change it out and repaint it um but before i did all that i'm going to inspect the post make sure the post is okay because if we're going to be taking board off let's look at the post because we got to take the board off post is bad my one thing about changing the post so happens to be this post is has no a hole in it <laughs> so um typically we find a lot of of posts like this that are um now this is a controversial issue i'm gonna tell you that right now right there's people that swear you don't cut fence post tops um that's the core right that is rotted down and fell inside um depending on 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 the timber you know so your wood post is an organic product. It dies it from rots. the day that you yeah. cut it, cut the tree, it's dying every day. Right. Treatment's great. It's still an organic product. Right. You're still going to have the decay process, right? It's, it's going to happen. Um, so by cutting it straight. So either if you don't cut the tops and leave the factory edge, edge. right? Wood dries and it shrinks. Okay. My theory, <laughs> years of experience, my theory, if you don't cut a little bit of an angle on a post top, right, the water sits. When that post dries, it shrinks. That wood product is right. going to shrink. Okay. It's going to create a cup in the top of the post. Right. I'm not going to tell you every post will do it. I'm not going to give you a percentage of posts that will do it. I have no idea. But if you angle, there is a portion of <laughs> that will do this. They're going to shrink in the center. It's going to draw down. So if you angled it, what's when the you When you cut the top on it, it allows that water to shed off. Okay. You know, it doesn't have to be a steep angle. Just give it some... Some... Runoff. Runoff, just a little bit of angle just to help that water get off the top of that post. Okay. Uh, you know, in, Fl in Florida, we have a lot of water and a lot of heat. And that makes that wood move a lot. Every time that, you know, it gets wet, it, it opens up. When it dries, it shrinks. And when it's wet, it opens up. That water's going somewhere inside that post. Gotcha. And that's where you get this. This, I can't get it back out now. 
but that's where you get this. The, um, and then what happens, so you get this and then you try and put a board up here and you shoot a nail into it or drive a nail into right. it or a screw. There's nothing inside to hold that. And that's when you get this, this problem here that you can just shove your nails in and out of the post. So I just learned something on this because I've always thought that's how a post should be. I've seen the angle ones and now talking to Tommy, I've got a better understanding of how the post should look or how it can last longer if my posts are that way. That's our theory on them. Good. All right, let's take a walk and take see what else we see. Well, okay, so right here, this is another why we don't put wire over top of board. Uh, not to say that you'll never hit wire if it's behind a board, but mower decks are infamous for grabbing wire. This is this is a common problem. So by putting are the wire- Are you telling on me? <laughs> I mean, unless you just did. Yeah, I have. Okay. <laughs> So by putting the wire behind the board, you're protecting. You're, it from... You are helping to protect gotcha. that wire a little bit. Now, of course, on the bottom under the board, you're you're going to have space that you you can hang the wire. But if this wire had been behind the board, chances of this happening would be greatly reduced. Okay, good. Let's keep walking. So this post is a great example of time. So it's hard to see from this angle. Uh, looking at it from the side, it's leaning way out compared to the rest of them. And this is just simply whether it's runoff, softer ground, Florida. We have, depending on how wh where you are, how deep you go, the soil changes a lot right. over a short amount of time, over, over a short amount of distance. So this could just be this could have been a soft a softer point in the ground. Um, you know, without pulling the post, we have no idea how, how far the post is in the ground. Uh, and how deep should a post be in the ground? Like to meet, hit that 30 inch mark. 30 inches. Yeah. I, I, I like to get to that 30 inch, inch, um, or more. Okay. Uh, you, you tend to get into that little bit harder ground after, you know, at that point. So anything above that, you know, again, depending on your soil, where you're at in the Ocala, the Marion County area you might have good ground at 10 inches right but that we we're pretty confident over building miles and miles and miles of fence 30 inches is, is a pretty safe okay. safe point point. and then the other thing i notice is there's no braces in this line of fence well there wouldn't be okay so because the wire was not intended from the beginning right because i've always said you have to have a brace so you can pull the wire so and that's what I've learned. If, if you're going to build a wire fence, absolutely. This fence was not built for wire. Okay. This is the afterthought. This is the, oh, the fence is already up, but we, now we need to add wire. So braces are more for wired fence, not yes. board fence. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So yeah, so, so like I said, this, this fence was built without wire and then they put the wire on after. So you're not going to have bracing. The board technically would be the bracing okay. to do it this way. Again, not the correct way, but you could pull the wire this way and the board's gonna act as a support, but and, it's- And I wanna say something, this is nice. Tommy isn't saying it's done wrong. He's saying there's a better way. And like Correct, I like to yeah. say that when I do my horses is there's a better way from his experience, we're gonna do it a better way. So if we have this replaced and we have the no climb, we're gonna do it right. Correct, yeah. Okay, all right, let's go and walk some more. So Tommy just stopped us because he sees a tree that was cut down and now he's going to tell us why that's important. Yeah, this is a common common thing we see. Uh, trees are cut but not removed on a fence line. And if we can come in here and show, this stump, had the tree had grown and actually removed the board from the post, pulled the post over, pushed the board off the post. So this obviously has been here for a long time uh years wise couldn't tell you but it has been here for a while so when we're putting it we're installing fence lines if you've got a stump on a fence line a tree on a fence line one allow room for that that tree to grow so come back either either remove it completely so it can't cause this this kind of structural damage right or allow enough room for that tree to keep growing okay again because that tree's alive unlike the posts that we're putting in the ground right. 
that tree's alive, it's gonna get bigger. So allow for that room. That's a great tip. 